In the last video, I've talked about the meaning of binding energy in the context of a person on Earth. And this idea of binding energy can be applied to to many situations, not, not just this, also to uh, energy needed to separate atoms in a molecule and just energy needed to separate anything really. So for, for this topic on nuclear physics, we are interested in the energy needed to separate protons and neutrons from a nucleus. So let me now look at an, an example of that. Now, um, I'm going to look at this example where I have, say, a helium, a helium nucleus. Now, helium nucleus has two protons and two neutrons. So that is its symbol. So two, two protons here and two protons and two neutrons, four altogether here. Um, right, so let's say, okay, let's say these are protons and these are neutrons and they are so somehow stuck together in the nucle nucleus. Now if if we can somehow separate these so that they are pulled apart far enough that they don't they don't attract each other anymore. Now in case you wonder how a proton can attract a proton, that is another story called strong nuclear forces, which is um, well beyond the the scope of, of uh, video and of A level physics, so I shan't go into that. So I'll just say that um, although the protons have positive charges and they're, and they're supposed to repel each other, and although the neutrons have, um, although the, the neutrons have are, are neutral, they have no charges, not supposed to attract or repel. When they're forced together until they're very close, um, they would actually attract each other very strongly. So there's something called nuclear force, which um, are very short range, which, which only acts over a very short distance, and and which are much stronger than the electric uh, repulsion between, say, um, protons, which is why they can be attracted attracted together. So this topic on nuclear forces um, is uh, I shan't uh, go into that. The only thing, uh, the only related thing that I'll be talking about is the energy involved, which, which is the binding energy that I want to talk about. Okay, so coming back to the proton and neutron, I'm interested in, in the energy and mass changes when say we separate the protons and neutrons in a helium nucleus um, into separate protons and neutrons. And from the previous video, you would understand that uh, when I say separate, it is understood to mean that they are, they, are, they are sort of pulled apart until they are far enough that they don't attract or repel, repel each other anymore. Okay, So that's what, what we mean by remove. It actually carries this this meaning that they must be far enough. Okay, now from um, the previous example in the in the last video, we've seen how when um, when we need to do work to to pull particles or pull the the tracting objects apart, the potential energy of these particles, of these objects, increase. And that corresponds to a certain mass increase. 
Now in this case, because they're so small, um, it's very difficult to directly measure the forces. It's probably possible with some clever uh, high energy physics experiments, but um, there is instead of measuring the forces and energies directly, or instead of measuring the forces directly, it is actually possible to measure the kind of energies and mass changes involved. And in fact, measuring the masses is actually uh, is actually more direct, and it's something that has been done quite accurately many, many years ago, maybe almost 100 years ago. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the masses of each of these particles and and try to understand how how the total mass of the product compare with the initial mass of the helium nucleus. Now these are um, uh, values which I look up again uh, on on Wikipedia. If you if you look up Wikipedia on helium nucleus on protons and neutrons, you'll find the masses, uh, very accurate values of the masses. So let me just write this down. Right, the mass of helium nucleus is 4.00 2602 U. Now, where U, U is the atomic mass unit, which is given by, um, let's see, 1.66 times 10 to the power of minus 27 kilogram. Now I've given this to many decimal places because I want to compare the two masses. Otherwise this would be just, if it's just to one place, this is just four and that's two and that's two and, and then there's no dif difference. Okay, and if I want to be very precise, there, there can also be more decimal places for this value for the atomic mass unit. But just to make things simpler, I'm just going to leave it as 1.66 down here. So in the case of proton, let's see, the, the mass of a proton is 1.007276U. That's for one proton, okay, not, not for two protons. And for one neutron, it's 1.008665 U. So these um, these are the masses of the of each particle. So what I want to do now is this: if we do not know anything about binding energies and E equals to mc squared and so on and so on, we would expect that the total mass before and after um, should be the same. I mean, that's after all what we would expect from, from everyday experience. I mean, mass don't just vanish and, and d disappear. So if we chop something into a few pieces, we would expect that the, like if we cut a piece of cake into four pieces, we would expect that the total mass of the four pieces should be the same as the mass of the original piece of cake. So let's find out if, if this is the case here. So what I do is I add up these masses. So total mass after after means here after separating is one point zero zero seven two seven U 
uh, twice of this times 2 plus this one 1.008665U times 2 so this is a total mass after uh, separating minus the mass before the, the, the original mass of the helium nucleus that would be 4.002602U after separating and this is before right before separating now if you carry out this calculation um, a bit tedious but you can do it on a calculator you should find that the answer is actually not zero okay so what is it actually you find that it is 0 0.02 928U. Okay. So this is what you would actually find. Now Let's think about this a bit. Um, there is there isn't a minus sign here. This is actually a positive answer. Okay, so this means that the the total mass of the the separate protons and neutrons is actually bigger. Not much, uh, it seems, but it's still bigger than the mass of the the helium nucleus itself. So where does this mass come from? Now it's something which is very difficult to understand when this this uh, kind of effect was first discovered about 100 years ago, right? not long before the, the Second World War. Um, but at that time it wasn't done for helium, uh, for separating helium into protons and neutrons. That requires a lot more energy. It was done for something like uranium. All right, if you recall, it, that has something to do with the atomic bomb. So it was in, in the research into uranium where it was discovered that there's a difference between the mass of the products and the mass of the starting material. So in this in this example, okay, we see that the product the, the total mass of these is a bit bigger than the total mass of the starting helium nucleus. And today we understand why. Right? From what I described in the last video about removing a person from Earth, um, we understand that uh, this mass increase is because, because of an increase in potential energy of the particles as we remove, as, as we do work to separate them from each other from the helium nucleus. So the work that we need to do to pull them apart is uh, become becomes the potential energy of these particles. And those potential energies have mass. Uh, they, have, they have mass which is given by E equals to M C squared. So if this is the increase in potential energy then this formula gives us the corresponding, the equivalent mass, which is this. So this, if this, if we take this to be this m in the equation, then we can actually use this equation to find the corresponding energy, the energy that was needed to remove them. And if you remember what that means, that would be the binding energy that I've been talking about. Okay, so um, now that we have a, have some understanding of what goes on here, let me um, let me go on to try and find this energy for this particular example. Uh, but before that, before that, just a quick 
a thing. Um, just a, I, 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 I should mention the name of, of this difference in mass okay, between the product and, and the starting um, nucleus. If this has a name, this name is called the mass defect. Right. It's an increase in mass, and for some reason, it, it was called a mass defect. I don't actually know why. So this mass defect means the difference between the 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 mass of the product and the mass of the starting material. Okay, so let's now use this mass defect as the M here to calculate the energy that was needed to separate them, meaning the binding energy. So I would just have to rearrange this. Uh, let's see, I got a mass. Oh no, I don't have to rearrange this. It's just just substitute the mass into here. Remembering that U is this value here, 1.66, 10 to minus 27 kilogram. And substitute the speed of light into here. Okay, where C is uh, about 3 times 10 to, to the power of 8 meters per second. So if we put these numbers in, let's see. Um, the answer that I got okay what I've also done was that I, I put those numbers in and I also divided it by the charge of an electron which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 of a coulomb so that I can express the energy in EV and the answer that I got was 27.27 MeV so this then is the binding energy um, of the protons and neutrons in the helium nucleus.